We've already looked at selection methods, but let's look a little bit deeper into this. With the active tool being select here, we already know that we have a choice of vertex, edge, and faces to choose from. You'll notice as well that I have to keep coming to this menu here every time I want to change from one to the other, which can be a little bit tedious. So what I've done here is I've assigned a hotkey to these so I can just toggle through them very quickly. To assign a hotkey, roll over the item you need assigned and hit the end key on your keyboard. At this point, you'll be prompted with a little message asking you to define the new hotkey. I've already done mine, so I'm going to say escape on this one. But you can see which ones I've assigned on this little pop-up dialog box. The hotkey for the vertex is F2 in this case, for the edges F3, and for the faces F4. And the auto option here is F1. So now I can use those to toggle through the different selection methods. So here I can choose F3 for the edges, F4 for faces, and F2 for vertex selection. The auto selection on F1 allows me to hover over any particular vertex, edge, or face, and those will become automatically highlighted when I roll over them. Once I select some faces, like these three polygons, for example, I then have to make a decision on what I want to do with these polygons. So if I move further down here, I have this section here. This means that whatever is selected here, I have these options to do something with that selection. So for example, I could expand the selection or contract. In this case, let's choose expand. And you can see that for every polygon that was initially selected, it selects all the adjoining polygons. You'll notice directly underneath the select tool, this option called select and transform. If I choose this one, making sure my faces are selected, when I click on one of these faces and hold shift down, you'll notice that the transform tool appears immediately. So it saves the step of going down and finding the transform tool. So now I can pull these faces out and do the transformation all in one go. Another useful method of selecting is the select path tool. The select path tool works by initially asking you to designate your first vertex where you want to start your selection from. So if I click on this one, for example, I can then click anywhere else and I get this preview line as to where that selection will take place. So now I can change that direction and move around my object. Once I've selected, I can just click the enter button and those edges become selected. You'll notice that the small vertex that I started with is still selected. That's because the tool is still active. If I hit escape on the keyboard, the tool then deselects and I have my active selection. At this point, I can go in, choose the transform tool, and maybe scale those. When using the select path tool, after you select your first point and click to select other points, when you come to the end of your selection, let's say for example, I want to close this selection where I started, you have to click and drag to make the final connection with the left mouse button. Once that's done, press enter and escape to drop the tool. So it's important to remember when you've selected faces, edges or vertex, that once selected, 
you have the ability then to use the selected menu to modify that selection either by coming over here to the left hand side of the UI or by hitting the quick access menu using the spacebar and here you can see selected menu items here so for example in this case I may want to extrude these faces I have the selection of faces already selected and I can now choose to expand the selection outwards or I could contract it this option here essentially deselects everything control D will do this as well on the keyboard this option will invert the selection if I click on here everything else is selected apart from the original selected polygons by clicking again will invert once again here I have two cubes in my scene the green cube in the polygroups panel has some polygons selected already the blue cube has nothing selected if I choose this final option here this will invert the selection that I already have and include any other groups inside my list as a selection to demonstrate that I'll just click on this option here and you can see that the original selection is now deselected and everything else including the blue layer has now become selected in this example the blue and green cube have been placed on a single green layer if I want to change this and put the blue cube on its own layer I can do two things firstly I could double click on the blue cube and over in this panel here I can create a new layer I'll call this one cube blue with this selection active I can now come over to this icon here where it says move selected faces to the current layer my current layer is cube blue by clicking on this it moves the faces from cube green over to cube blue and now if I deselect and toggle between them you can see that the blue cube can now be turned on and off using the visibility icon as well as separating objects onto their different layers we can also combine them together onto a single layer here I have a cylinder blue which is on its own layer and I have cube green on its own layer if I select the cylinder you'll notice these little dots on the end of the layer and when you ro roll your mouse over them your cursor changes if you hold down shift whilst the cursor has these four arrows and click your left mouse button and drag over the layer you want to drop them onto then both objects occupy the same layer and the previous layer information is deleted so now both items are on the same layer other ways to select in 3d code can be done using the E panel here if I click E on the keyboard it'll bring the panel to my cursor so here for example I've got this selection of pens or brushes to use as selection or here we've got some different tools like the square lasso rectangular lasso and so on so I can use these to select let's choose the rectangular lasso tool and here I'm going to rotate the model around to the right view here and I'm going to click and drag to select you can see here that I've managed to select all the polygons all the way through the model the reason for this if I click E you can see it says ignore back faces and it's unchecked so let's try this again D to deselect E and then this time let's check this box now I select the polys again 
and you'll notice it only selected the front facing polys. It ignored the back facing polys. So again, clicking E on the keyboard and then ignore back facing polys. Unchecking to select through. Here I can now use the same marquee, hit control on the keyboard and then deselect polygons like so. Using a different tool here I'll click the E key on the keyboard to bring up the E panel and this time choose vertex lasso. So here I'm going to hold shift down just to constrain my selection and I'll click and drag the marquee around like so, closing it at the end. This selects the shape for me which is continued right the way through to the other side because I have the ignore back faces unchecked. Let's try this again using the vertex selection tool and also let's make sure vertexes are selected. Here I'll draw a selection using the same tool and you can see that the vertexes have been selected. Under the selected option on the left hand side we can see here that we have a number of options based on our selection including store and load selection and clear selection. If we want to store and use this selection for another time we can simply click this button. Then we can save our selection. If at any time we want to bring that selection back we simply go to load and reload our selection. Here I'm going to select a portion of this cube and place it on another layer. First thing to do here is to use my rectangular marquee and I'm going to choose faces as my selection option. I'll draw around these polys here, selecting all of them. Now I'll create a new layer and use the icon Move Selected Faces to Current Layer. Make sure that the new layer is selected and hit the icon. Now those objects have been moved to the other layer. Let's deselect and we can toggle through and see. However, you may think that these are separated. But if I move the new layer, you'll notice that they are still connected. This may be OK and may be the result you're looking for. But if you expected them to be disconnected, you'll have to select the edge. Let's escape and use our edges tool and change to a brush selection and make a selection like so. Then I'm going to come down to the selected menu and choose split edge. Now you can see that polygroup 2 in this case has now changed color indicating that it is now separated from the previous mesh. I'll drop the selection, select all the faces on the layer called polygroup 2 and use my transform tool. And now you can see those objects are separated. Sometimes you may want to make quick selections. If I've got my edges selected here and I select by double clicking on an edge, you'll notice it selects the whole loop. I can continue to do this all the way around without holding shift down to multi-select. If I decide I want this line of edges to be selected, I simply double click and where the selection terminates on my original selection, this one will not go beyond on either side. So again, clicking anywhere between those two selections
At this point, I could use the bevel tool here and create a bevel on those selections to change the geometry. The same goes for vertex. If I choose the vertex here, for example, hold shift down and double click the vertex next to it, I will select a loop all the way around. If I choose this vertex and hold shift and click once, by clicking on the vertex again with a double click, I will select all the vertex in between. Again, select the vertex, double click the vertex to select all the ones in between. Here I'll choose faces as my selection option and I will click two faces and double click to select in between. If I want to continue this, I could even just drag in between those two. If I want to select the portion in between, all I need to do is double click holding shift. Then of course, I can come over to my selected and expand that or contract or even invert the selection. The final thing we'll talk about regarding selections are some tools down here about midway. You'll notice it says free scaling, free moving and free rotating. To explain these, you can see here that I've got my select option active. If I have free moving selected, you'll notice that the select option deactivates. This is a way for me to move the subject freely without a selection. So again, if nothing is selected, the object is selected. The same goes for scaling and rotating. Another interesting aspect of this tool is the pick point pivot. If I select this, you'll notice that my cursor turns to this red crosshair. If I select this point, now I can pivot around that particular point. Choose pick point pivot again and relocate that pivot to a different part of the model. This works with scaling. Let's choose pick point again. And now I will scale from that up place. And finally, move. You'll notice on the move option, however, that this is no longer visible because wherever we move, the whole object will move as one. So to compare, if I use select and transform with faces selected and I hover and click this face, you'll notice that the pivot point is placed in the center of that polygon. But now if I move this or rotate it, it's only rotating the actual polygon, not the object. So the free move, scale and rotate tools are slightly different than our selection tools here because they are more object focused. In the next video, we'll look at creating and editing new geometry in more depth. See you next time.